Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. Hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Fingers crossed. Okay, you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Don't worry, I tend to read the description afterwards as well. This is the next episode in my retro review. It's a retro review series. Um, it's one that I'd started myself, didn't really get very far with, and then... Uh, the lovely Alexis asked, could we do a monthly collab together? I suggested breathing life back into my retro review series. She likes the idea. I sent her a list of older palettes that I was interested in reviewing again or using again or encouraging you if you've got them to pull them out of your drawers and use them again rather than buy new ones and this month she has chosen the Colourpop Yes Please palette. Now this is the first time that Colourpop ever produced a palette. They'd done pressed shadows before but this was the first time they'd put them together into a palette. And I don't know what you're thinking. It says QTAF on the front yet for some reason the first couple of prints, although it had Yes Please on the back of the palette and on the palette packaging, on the front of the palette it was reminding you, you're cute AF. So, if you want to find out exactly what this looks like inside, as if you don't already know, which colours I've chosen and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. And then my friend, you are in precisely the right place and I think it's fair to say you have the best seat in the house. Sam with a sloth straw confirms it is now time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back, have a quick slurp of my drink. Mango juice. Right, um, I would have told you in the intro, this is of course another one of my retro reviews and it's with the first ever Colourpop palette that they did. They sold pressed pick, uh, pressed shadows on their own, but this is the first one they put them together into a palette. And the palette is called Yes Please. See? Yes Please. But the first few iterations that they released, although the palette is called Yes Please and the outer packaging said Yes Please, the palette said Cute AF on the front. So this is how you can tell this is one of the originals. Because I believe now it does say yes plays on it. Um, this was the dupe for the first Natasha Nona, I think it was the Sunrise palette. Sunrise, Sunset, the first one she released. Um, and I've, I used this a fair amount when it first came out. Haven't touched it for ages. But... Don't want to get rid of it because I just don't. And when I sent my list of film uh, palettes across to Alexis, she said to me, "Oh, do you still have the colour pop? Yes, please." I'm like, "As it happens, yes, I do." So that's the palette for this month. Um, I'm actually look, quite looking forward to dipping back in and seeing how well it performs after all this time. 
So, this is still a teaching channel, which means that you only have my eyes on screen during the application process. This is so you can really see what's going on, even if you've got bad eyesight and you're watching me on a phone screen. It does mean that when I'm looking down to add more pigment or change, you know, colour or, you know, clean the brush off to, to change colours, you do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak, but that's a small payoff to be able to see what's happening. Um, it also makes it easier for me to cut out sections when I wince and have to stop because of pain. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment, which will again be just my eyes on screen, where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids, because I see so many people with deep set eyes saying, I've got hooded lids, and they follow the instructions for a hooded lid application and wonder why it's not working on their lids properly. And I'm like, well, it's because you've got deep set eyes, girly, or boy, or they, whomever if they're non-binary. <clears throat> so, the clip that I insert talks you through very clearly the difference between the two eye types and then the workaround for each eye type. Once that is done, I'll be back to pop some of these coloured pigments onto my eyelids. So, I'll see you in a couple of seconds after this clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid 
it tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again. It tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies. Crikey, how many times did I say the word clip? <laughs> right, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with a Luxie Tapered Blending Brush 205. It's clean, it's just stained. So it's a big old fluffy brush. And I'm going to dip into Mischief, which is the yellow in the bottom corner. Picks up a fair amount of dust. Now, as always, I'm going to do the um, Viennese Waltz method of application rather than the windscreen wiper. Now, the Viennese Waltz is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is a number of reasons. One, I'm 47 years old. Two, I've lost over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves a lot. So if I just do the windscreen wiper, the lid folds over and you get those telltale white stripes. By doing the Viennese waltz we are gently moving the skin in both directions. So if it does fold over on itself, you can still catch it and you don't get the striping which is a dead giveaway. Like I said, I struggle because of my age and because of weight loss, but I know slim teenagers who have a similar issue with flexible eyelids. Okay. I start on the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to sort it out over here when your nose isn't in the way. And as always, um, I do my eyes first so that any fallout doesn't matter I can just wipe it away so I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm just going to start applying this pigment now during the application process I usually just talk about the palette and witter on it you. But I thought I'd tell you a little bit about Alexis this time instead of just saving it till the end. So I've been watching Alexis um, a couple of weeks before I messaged her asking if she'd like to do a collab with me. And initially we did one of my photo inspiration collabs. Um, and I think she was shocked because at the time she, I think she had about 300 subscribers at the time. And I'm like, well, you know what, I don't look at that. I look at the person that's presenting. I look at the kind of looks you do. I look at your temperament. I look at whether I think the people that watch me would enjoy watching you. And um, I was also fascinated because she's, um, she's a, a practicing Muslim, she wears a hijab. And I have no idea how she does it without getting f makeup and foundation 
all over it because I know full well I would if I had to wear one. So, skills. And she was very similar to Nona. She was very neutrals in terms of the colours that she was choosing. But I've noticed that since collabing with me, because obviously I always say that the whole point of makeup is to have fun with it. You know, don't wear colours over 30. <laughs> what do you think of that? Yeah, don't put shimmers, don't use shimmers after 30. I do all shimmer looks, I don't care. You know, if I like it and it's not offensive to anybody, then I don't care if anybody else likes how it looks or not. You know? To me, makeup is... It's art, it's an expression and it's it's something that if you decide that the look you've done you don't like, you take it off and you start again. It's you know, it's not like it's permanent. But I'm just cleaning the brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't use colour switches anymore because they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially if you're using natural hair brushes. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how well that yellow still performs because yellows are not an easy colour to produce in the first place and get that amount of, of pigment showing. So the fact that it's still going all these years later, I'm really impressed with. Right, I'm going to go into Big Cocktails. which is um, like a pumpkin orange. Again, these do kick up a heck of a lot. I've not got orange pigment all down my top. <laughs> well done, Ange. Um, these do kick up an awful lot, but then I, I seem to remember they always did. But it does feel like they're kicking up more than they used to. So that could be a sign that they are getting towards the end of their usefulness but all the while they still work I'm still going to keep using them. Right, so I'm going to do the same thing just lower down. I'm going to really sort of blow the edge out here so that it comes down onto my mobile lid as well. I may decide to darken a little bit more or I may just keep it nice bright simple look I haven't entirely decided yet this is what I do unless I've got a specific look that I've been inspired by that I'm, I'm recreating or doing my version of um, most of the time when I sit down I have no clue what colours I'm going to pull I just sit down and see what calls me on the day And it's really dull and overcast out there, but it's still really, really hot. So I thought I'd do a nice sort of, oh, it's like a tequila sunrise, isn't it? Ooh, it makes me fancy one now, but it's far too early in the day to be drinking alcohol. And I suppose it's five o'clock somewhere in the world. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yes, so, um, I was saying about Alexis, wasn't I? She actually works in the medical field and she has, obviously, a lot of scientific knowledge. So, you know, when she does unboxings and there are these serums and creams and whatnots, she can actually tell you what the serum does, you know, what does hyaluronic acid do, what does salicylic acid do, you know, which is great, you know, vitamin C, it's like she was saying 
Um, she'd got a the box said it was a vitamin C and serum. And she went, this had better be in a dark bottle then because vitamin C when it's exposed to daylight starts breaking down and degrading. So it needs to be in a dark bottle and she said she usually keeps the bottles in the boxes in a drawer to protect them as much as possible. And again, that's something that I, I wouldn't have known had I not watched her channel. Um, so it's, it's super informative. And she's growing really quickly. She seems to be the only person I know that's bucking the trend of, of not growing. Everybody else seems to be really stalled. And it's like, you know, you, you gain two people and then you lose four. And then you gain three and you lose one. And it's like... I mean, this is the absolute slowest I've ever grown. And yet I'm not doing anything different. So... Do you see how easily those blended together? I'm really impressed by that. I'm really impressed that this palette is doing this well after this long. Sorry, I'm sounding a bit husky today. It's, it's allergy season. It's, hubby was mowing the lawn yesterday and clipping a lot of the trees down. Um, we've got silver birch and cherry trees down the garden. I'm trying to grow an acer, but it's just refusing at the moment. It's, it's sort of it's got to about two foot tall and he's going, I don't want to grow any bigger than this. I'm going to stay exactly like I am. Stubborn little bugger. Right. Uh, I'm going to pop some... I just want to show you before I... Do you see the amount of dust in there from that kick up? And I'm very light when I dip into palettes. You know, I, I ha I've seen people moan about kick up. And then I use the exact same palette and think, mm, I'm not getting kick up, what's going on? Because I am very, very light handed with palettes. So for me to get that amount of kick up is quite surprising. Now, I'm going to pop um, some shimmers on. Never put a wet brush into a pressed powder. Because you will get hard pan and you will eventually get to the stage that you can't get the hard pan off, it will eventually go down and completely ruin the whole palette, the whole um, pigment. If you've got loose pigment, you need to go in with a wet brush. So, with a, with a pressed pigment, get the pigment on your brush first, then give it a spray. Um, I'm tending to use my cheaper sprays because to be honest, I've only been using the Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day because it's about the only one I've found that works. That and um, the All Nighter from Urban Decay. But the Urban Decay one's got a really high alcohol content and really dries my skin out. Um, I have got a new one that I'm going to try today though. It's the Kimchi Stage Proof Matte Setting Sprays. I'm going to see what that's like. Um, it's about the same price as the Gerard Cosmetics anyway. Um, and I do have a discount code with Gerard. At the moment I'm loving this one. This is the rose one that they did in collaboration with Nikia Joy. Um, the Australian uh, beauty guru. But, yes, uh, if you want to use any of my discount codes, find out what I've got. They're all listed down in the description box. But that was basically to tell you, don't put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. But my brain goes off for a wander, and it goes around three or four different stories and then comes back again. UK viewers who are old enough to remember watching the two Ronnies, remember how Ronnie Corbett would sit in his big sort of Queen Anne wings chair, start to tell you a story, and then tell you six more stories, and then come back and finish the first story? Yeah, I think that kind of affected me as well when I was a kid, because I, I seemed to do exactly the same thing ever since my fibro kicked in so yay to that 
Uh, I'm going into a butter cake pigment, which is this lovely soft gold. Now, now you've sprayed this, this ferrule is wet. So tuck it into your knuckle and just spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down there and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in. Okay? So I've just got a flat, this is actually a concealer brush. And I'm going to come right into the inner corner there. And just bring that up to about, that's about a third of the way along the lid ish. Now, when I do the other eye, just dry that brush off. You may notice I've got super, super deep creasing just here, which even my Viennese Waltz blend doesn't stop the tiger striping. That's because that eye was pulled around a lot when I was four or five years old at the ophthalmic hospital, um, trying to work out what I wasn't seeing properly in it or with it. Um, and that's the damage that was caused. So when I tell you, don't pull your eyes around, that's why. Because that damage didn't show itself until, I think that was around about 40, 41, when all of a sudden I was noticing I've got these super deep creases and it was giving me an issue because when I put pigment on here, particularly if I'm using a shimmer, builds up loosely in those creases then as it dries it gets in my eye and down my face and it really hurts so I have to break my own rule about not stretching my lid out if you have a similar problem because you've already done damage to your lids this is how I do it to prevent any additional damage or as little additional damage as possible I very gently stretch the lid out just far enough that I've straightened those creases. So I'm not pulling it out past me ear on. And I'm just gonna put that pigment on and give it a damn good blend to make sure it's on and then gently let the lid go back. I don't just let go and let it ping back. And then just continue along with the pigment the same way I did with this side but you can see the skin on this lid moves an awful lot more than this one and that is unfortunately because of that damage right I'm now going to go into a pigment a shimmer called chauffeur I wonder if Alexis and I will have done the same colors this time she um after we did our photo collab, she messaged me saying she really enjoyed using different colours and stuff because of me, you know, inspiring her to do that. And would I like to do a monthly collab with her? Which I think was fantastic. I love when people I've collabed with enjoy collabing with me so much they come back and say can we do another one so you can see i'm just applying this on the remaining part of the mobile that had no pigment and i'm going to very gently just smooth butter cake and chauffeur together just where they meet so you don't get that harsh line of blend and then using the very tip of the bristles, I'm just going to blend it into the mat on the end there. Dry the brush off, apply more pigment and repeat for the side. Um, yeah, so I said to her, okay, what have you got in mind? Did you want to do a photo collab each month or something different? And she said, oh, no, 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 I'd quite like to do something different. And I'd started my retro review series a while ago, but with one thing and another, I'd, I'd just, I'd not got very far with it. I think I'd done about two films at that point. 
So I said to her, how did she feel about um, picking up one of my old series that I sort of didn't really do with, much with. Uh, described to her basically what it was to try and because I've got so many palettes and nine times I mean I use them off screen obviously but in terms of on screen I really I've fallen into the trap that the bigger YouTubers do where you just use newer stuff because you think that's all people are going to be interested in it's one of the reasons I started my photo inspiration series so that I had an excuse to use older palettes on screen and um, you know it's part of the whole trying to cut down on the whole consumerism issues that we've got in the world at the moment where we're such a throwaway society it's, I just hate it you know I, I grew up in the 70s when washing machines were twin tubs so you reused the water each time rather than putting in fresh water for each wash, you know. <laughs> wash days were hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, wash days were hard. But, you know, and it's like all the veg came with mud on it and you put it into paper bags, not plastic bags, and you weighed it. It's just... <sighs> so I kind of despair at this kind of the throwaway thing. But this is a pad just with my cellar water on that I'm going to use to tidy the edge up with. And um, I just I wanted to try and encourage people to look at what they've got. Because let's face it, there are only so many colours in the spectrum. And the majority of new palettes that come out, unless they're you know, duo or multi-chromes. Nine times out of ten you're gonna be able to dupe it with one or more palettes of your own. And I just wanted to try and get into the habit of doing that rather than relying on new stuff all the time. Plus I can't really afford it. You know I'm disabled, I'm only on benefit money and prices of everything since Brexit have skyrocketed but unfortunately my money coming in hasn't. So, that was the, uh, Alexis liked the idea of the sort of, the anti-consumerism and using what we've got, so that's why we um, started to do this each month. So, that's my look so far. I'm going to pause you, I'm going to pop some foundation and bits and bobs in terms of face stuff, and uh, I will be back to finish off my eye look with you but uh, I'm gonna have a little while now before I get to chat to you again but for you my puppets it's going to be absolutely instant so I'll see you right now hey lovelies okay I am back I used the shade Spoiled to do my brows today from the palette, like you do. Right, I'm going to dip back into Big Cocktails, that's the orange, with another concealer brush and just run that. along the lower lash line like so because it's uh, allergy season and because I've got very watery eyes anyway I'm not going to attempt putting anything into my waterline Oh, I tend to finish my looks off like this instead. And then this, oh, I love this brush for smudging out. It's awesome. 
This is from my Spectrum, it's the A07 brush. It's like flat top but chunky, a little bit like me. Right, I'm going to dip into Mischief, which is the yellow. And I'm going to use that just to smudge that lower lash line out. Soften it up, smoke it out a little bit. Um, this is the one from the Mean Girls set they did. And it's the, that's so fetch. Stop trying to make fetch happen. try this Elamasta highlight that came in my rocker box. This is in shade Deity and it looks like this. It's like a pale champagne. It's a white base with like a champagne shift to it. This is a teeny tiny little brush. I think it's a lip brush. Not entirely sure to be honest. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that, pop that up under the tail of the brow, because apparently ladies, gentlemen and other uh, brows are affected by gravity the same as everything else is. And by popping, you don't have to use a shimmer, you can always just use like a a shade that's slightly lighter than your skin tone to highlight under the brow just gives the illusion that the brows are lifted slightly gives you a slightly more youthful finish to your look and I'm going to use this on the inner corner and as you know I like to bring mine along under the tear duct and just blend it in a little bit with the colours under the eye. I'm not entirely sure that's bright enough for what I want for the inner corner. Let's grab this. I've got the Clinique one of the Will you shut up, fun? Honestly, it never does this. When I'm paused and doing all my face, quiet as you like. Right, this is one of the Clinique um, celebration ones that they do for the Chinese New Year. I'm a tiger, hubby is an ox, but I'm a Taurus, so I just had to pick this up. How cute is she? Look at that. Um, yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of this. And yes, I'm just going for the flowers around the edge. I'm trying not to touch the cow. That's a bit brighter. Yeah. <laughs> like that. my beautiful ones I'm going to pause you for one last time while I hold up some more highlight onto my face put some mascara on choose what I'm going to do with my lips do something with my hair I'll be back with my finished look so I'll see you well again for you instant I am back okay the lippy is actually a, it's one of the limited edition ones from, wasn't this new year, it must have been last new year, um, and it's, it's called Peachy New Year, how pretty is that packaging though, I mean don't get me wrong, I love the classic black MAC packaging, but there is something to be said when they do these, and it's in a matching which I think is pretty. Uh, mascara is the Maybelline Sky High, <clears throat> which 
Now I've had it open for a couple of weeks and it's dried up a little bit. I much prefer it. A lot of people when they opened theirs have said it was very dry to start with. Mine was super wet. I'd, I'd get, because I've got quite long lashes anyway, I'd get like the spider footprints across here when I first used it because it was just so wet. So, this is my look with the Yes Please palette. I wonder whether Alexis will do a similar look because so far we've both done, we've both chosen different colours from the palette. So it'll be interesting to see whether she's gone for the brights or whether she's gone for the more, because obviously there's a lovely selection of cool tone browns, warm browns, chocolate browns. Um, and this peach up here is very nice as well. So it'd be interesting to see which colours she's gone for. Whether she's gone for the same as me the first time. But yes, if you've got this palette, do you like it? What do you think? Um, how old is yours? Have you got a cute AF or have you got a yes please? Let me know. Uh, the highlight is the Illamasqua one. It's okay. It's not that blinding, but... And as I said, I tried the, the kimchi setting spray today instead of my Gerard one. Um, I think that's all. Yeah. I think my camera's slightly... I do apologise if I've been slightly off kilter all that time, but uh, I'm not going to re-record it because that just wouldn't be me. Okay, if you're a regular viewer, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are oh, unsubscribing people at a rate of knots, uh, but they're leaving my films in your feed. It's not obvious you've been deleted. Um, they're not just doing it to me, they're doing it to a lot of people across the board so you know when you when you go to watch a film just double check for everyone that you watch that your subscribe button is still grey um, and double check your notification status as well because mine keeps getting pushed back to personalise which means that I don't get any notifications at all I've, I've missed about four or five films from you know one of the people that I follow a lot because uh, the notifications wasn't on and for some reason they decided not to show her in my news feed probably because I'd missed one film and then they're like oh you're not interested in her anymore yes I am if I wasn't interested I would have unsubscribed honestly just checking there's nothing on my teeth because you're not very good at telling me about that If you're new here, either from Alexis's channel or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, it's lovely to have you here, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, this is a pretty good indication of what you're going to get from me. Uh, slightly nutty, slightly cracked uh, bird who applies coloured pigments to her face while wittering on about everything and nothing all at the same time. You'll occasionally get serious talk about politics and stuff and most of the time it's what's going on in my life, god kids, hubby, weather, pain levels and the beauty industry. So uh, if you would like to see some more of these it's super easy we are the nicest family on YouTube and the way you join us is you click that red subscribe button then you ring my bell ring my bell in the hope that YouTube will actually send you the notifications in the meantime I have an awful lot of other films that you can be watching I have as well as an ample back side, an ample back catalogue. Do you see what I did there? Do you? Did you like it? Okay, moving on. Uh, basically, I've got all kinds of films. I've got other collabs. I've got 
challenges, product reviews, makeup tutorials, tag films. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So if you're looking for a little bit of chill out time, basically, as I've said since what well, it feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a straw, put your feet up, pick a playlist and settle down with your coffee and your custard cream or whatever your biscuit of choice may be and just chill out for a bit watching some of my films. Either way, if you are new here and you haven't come from Alexis's channel, or you're one of my 4F babies, you know what I'm going to say now? That's right, I'm going to need you to go over to Alexis's channel and watch her film, let her know you've come from 4F, and basically do all those good YouTuber things. Give her a like, give her a comment. Subscribe to her if you haven't already, because you won't regret it, you really won't. Um, you know, just basically show her the same kind of love that you always show me in my comment section. Alright my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I, well I'll see you next time. Bye for now.